Hi, now I will choose a specific frequency from a sound source and make our fox glow according to it. So, with Unity open, the first thing that I will do is rearrange a little bit our views here. So I can actually see the editor view and the game view at the same time. Next, I will make a copy of our little fox and I will move that new fox over and I will move my camera. But before I rename that, there's a thing when I export OBJ files from Blender, they will always come in this form. They will always have a parent object and a child object, but the child object actually has the mesh renderer and the mesh filter on them. And those two components are what actually draw the mesh. When I switch this off, the fox is no longer drawn. And this makes things a little bit confusing. So what I like to do is drag this child object in between here. So it's no longer a child of this parent. I can delete the parent now and I will rename this child object to glow fox. Next, let's actually create the material that glows for the fox. I go in here and the first thing you guessed it is create a folder called materials. Go in the folder, hit create and go to shader because we want to create a new shader graph and select PBR graph. And I will call this shader graph glow shader. And then I will right click this shader graph file before doing anything else going to create and clicking material and I will call this material glow material because the way this is set up is but you can use the same shader for different materials it's a little bit confusing in the beginning don't worry I mess it up a lot of times and what I like to do then is drag this glow material onto our glow fox by the way let me rotate that back to zero so it stands upright again. Then I double click glow shader here. And this is actually the output node of shader graph. So when I go in here where it says albedo and I change this to another color and I save this shader graph, this fox becomes red. So when you shine light on your object, it gives you back that color. What we are actually interested in, oh, let me reset that to white and save the asset, is the emission because that is what actually makes the fox glow by itself, even if you don't shine light on it. Save the asset again, and you will see that it slightly glows now in the dark. And the trick to make this a little bit more accessible now is to go on this little keyhole here, drag it out, and then add an emission node. Let me select the orange color again, and then we can set the emission intensity to something like 10. So now it glows much brighter. If we set this to 100, this is a glary fox now. So what we actually want to play with is this value now, but we cannot access this value from the inspector window yet. And this is what we need if we want to play with it with scripts. So what I have to do is make it an exposed property. Select this again, drag it out and search for vector one, pull this up, select like four here. It's just relaying the number at the moment. I right click that and I go to convert to property. And now this vector one shows up in my blackboard up here. And if I now save the asset, it actually becomes available down here at the material as a vector one. And if I now play with this number here, you can see that the, that the fox glows more or less, depending on the number that is in there. To make things less confusing, let me call this property by its name, which should be glow. And I learned to put an underscore there. And what I also have to do, and this is a little bit special for shader graph, I have to give this reference a name. Otherwise, I will have to later work with this reference that's in here. So I like to just copy the name that I gave it just here and copy it into the reference. This is also glow underscore. Let's hit enter and save the asset. And now you see this name changed, but it's still working. Next, we want to actually add the component that we analyze the frequency with. And this is called PD Frequency Band Bind. Let me just again hook up the PD backend to this slot here. And now, if we go into play mode and select the input channel, channel 16, you should see it a little bit in gray now. If we hit render, it gets drawn in white. This is actually the real time frequency spectrum of my voice. So here you see that the S sounds are coming and here is like the bassy stuff going on in the left. If I want to see it a little more clear, I can drag this open 
And I'm actually super proud of this grip because it serves a lot of purposes and took a long time to make. Chikashi originally made it and then Naoto improved it by making it more and more efficient. And what I can do now is start my drum loop, check where the input channel is, coming in on 9 and 10. So let me select 9, pull the gain up here. And now I'm just interested in the snare drum. You see here is the kick drum coming in. That's probably the hi-hats. And here, you can see this frequency is only coming up when the snare drum is hitting. So we drag it. And we can actually just select the snare drum. So you can barely see the number move here now. So this number is the number that we want to send to our global material now. So let me go out of play mode, stop the drum beat, and we forgot to copy our values here. That's a shame, so we have to do it again. But let me add the script that now connects the frequency band bind with the material. And this is actually called shader graph binder. We can add a new slot here, drag in our shader graph binder, select the energy changed method. And now this shader graph binder wants a material. So we drag in our glow material. And we know that we call this property here glow underscore. Very importantly, we also call the reference glow underscore. So this is what actually makes the connection now into shader graph. And if we start up the project again now, select the channel, start our drum loop, render the spectrum. You can now actually really select just the snare drum sound. To make this script more performant, it actually helps to not render the spectrum but it will just draw just fine. But the glow value is very jumpy right now. So what I want to do now is actually make the decay of the glow, so to speak, a little longer. And I talked a long time to Chikashi about this and he wrote a script that we called Smoother and we can put it in between the frequency band bind and the shader graph binder and actually hook it up. Select the Smoother on value changed and then Select the output of the smoother and select shader graph binder, shader graph binder on energy changed method. And now if I start the drum loop again, I can play with the release here. Also actually has a scaling function. So this is just scaled by one now, but if I scale it by 10, the Fox is glowing much more. If I scale it by 40, it glows even more. Let me see if I can catch the frequency of the snare drum a little better now. We actually put another function in here, which is the logarithmic scaling. We put this on, this changes. Let me also put up the gain a little bit. And you see that this value is actually the one that we're looking for. So, ah, now it's nice. Yeah, so this is basically our snare drum, quite clearly visible. So now, again, to carry out changes out of the play mode, let me select all the game objects just to be safe. Copy them, go out of play mode, delete, copy them back in, start the project once more for testing. And here it is, just fine, still glowing. To make the script more performant, let's just switch off the render spectrum in edit mode because if it runs without the render spectrum enabled it will not render in the editor it will run much more performant but will still do the same thing so this is basically how you make a fox glow on the snare drum with unity and sound vision bye